So one of the things I struggle with with um, research is figuring out what is the right level of abstraction when I am thinking about a particular idea. And I struggle with that because the challenge with the level of abstract, abstraction, I'll get into what I what do I mean by that in a minute, is thinking about how much of the context actually matters to what you're saying. So a very high level of abstraction has very simple rules that explain a lot of different stuff. Um, or not necessarily explain it completely, um, but explains it partially, explains sort of things um, very broadly. So, you know, really abstract concept is um, F equals MA, the sort of um, principle of force equals mass times acceleration. It explains a huge number of things within sciences, um, the physical sciences. It's really basic, really abstract, um, and yet it, it has pretty good explanatory power for a lot of things. But it doesn't explain like things like, you know, love and, you know, subjective things. Um, and so we have to sort of come up and think about, you know, different ways of, of coming up with abstractions. So before you go about and, and think about, well, that's only in the realm of, you know, the subjective world, I, got, I, I need you to remember is that, you know, um, mass and acceleration, while they have physical traits in the physical world, are still just, um, you know, they're made up constructs that somebody made up many years ago to explain a particular phenomenon, right? And it sort of is capturing something that we know about in terms of, you know, how much matter, uh, you know, ma uh, mass is how much um, matter is in a, in a given area, for example, right? And, and that is a, is a beautiful sort of construct. And then, um, uh, or in a given volume, or, you know, I think that's mass. <laughs> I might be mistaken. Is that density or mass? I think that is um, shoot, how much matter, mass is how much matter, um, oh, shoot, how, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the definitions, I was just going through this like two days ago, it's funny, and this is the problem with abstraction, right, it's hard to remember these things intuitively, because they're very abstract, um, and they don't make a lot of intuitive sense. So I'm reading this really interesting paper right now that, um, you know, that was forwarded to me on naive physics, and we have this sort of different world of, uh, you know, the world around us, we come up with a naive physics explanation in terms of how the world works, and that almost all of us have these very naive views of, of how the world actually works, but then if you talk to a real physicist that understands the world, um, they will have a different explanation that is, is simpler, and yet um, we, we are baffled when we see sort of explanations of these particular things, and we have to think about it, and then we have to say, oh yeah, you know what, that makes sense, and then you forget about it um, in a while, right, like it disappears. So, you know, the idea of, of abstraction is thinking about how abstract that you need it to be to understand what you're trying to explain. And so if it's really, if you're explaining a lot of contextual factors, right, like the sort of what's happening right now within a given space, so right around you, um, at this moment that has a lot of contextual factors or, you know, somebody else's frame of reference from a different area has a lot of contextual factors that are involved. Um, and, and if you explain that particular thing, then, you know, you get this really rich understanding of what's going on. But, you know, it's not necessarily, not necessarily explaining the sort of broader phenomenon that you might be interested in. And so I struggle between thinking of how abstract should it be? The more abstract it is, it has um, a f it, it, the, the audience actually diminishes um, in terms of a more. So there's this trade-off, right? Like if it's really abstract and it's really beautiful, you might have a really big audience, right? So F equals MA has a really big audience. People understand what you're talking about. 
but if it's if it's abstract um, and it's not quite beautiful, your audience can be really tiny because it only it requires a certain small group of people that can follow along with what you're actually doing. Um, and I struggle with sort of thinking about those and what that actually means, right? Because the more contextual you talk about in the in the you know current day and time, or you know that sort of frame of reference of that current sort of moment in time, um, it's easy to explain these particular things, right? So it might be I don't know if you're talking about today, for example. Um, you know, it might be due to having a nice conversation about the weather outside, for example, and using that as as some sort of explanatory variable in what you're doing, and everybody kind of understands that, right? Like, the weather goes up, then something happens. Um, or, or, you know, the temperature goes up, and something happens. And it's pretty easy to explain, but it doesn't explain other things than, than what's going on right now. Um, and, and so you necessarily can't generalize to a lot of stuff. So because it's like a tricky I grapple with this of how abstract you should go. And um, there's all these sort of decisions on how abstract it should be. Because the more abstract it is, it becomes like pretty beautiful, right? Like it's a really nice um, understanding of what it is because it's pretty simple. Right? Generally, the more abstract that you go, the more simpler it becomes. The explanation becomes really simple because you're removing all these other sort of contextual factors. Right? The more that it's contextual, the more that you have to explain all these kind of things and, and sort of, you know, talk about this. And the, the, in, the, in the paper that I was, you know, just recently reading, and I can't remember the person who wrote it, um, about naive physics, you could look it up, um, was sort of talking about, um, I know this was a different pa- paper, I'm sort of grappling in this area, um, about talking about causal chains in that, you know, in our immediate world, um, you know, that has a lot of context and contextual factors, we use a lot of, um, you know, causal chains where we we ascribe this thing happened and then that because of this happened and because of this happened because of this, which is like what the real world actually is. We have all these sort of, you know, interlinking causal effects that are happening, but in, in science is, is really abstract. Um, you know, most explanations are pretty abstract. And then, you know, there's degrees of how abstract this stuff actually becomes super extract st- stuff becomes very co- complicated in the sense that it's only a small audience that can sort of grapple what, what you're talking about um, was it because it goes in so many different areas and, and that's where I struggle right is like getting that right what is it that we're actually talking about anyway sorry about that there's an interruption um yeah, my point is, it's just that it's really hard to sort of get a sense of what that is. And I don't think that there is, like, a way that you can determine what is an appropriate level of analysis other than simply, um, or, you know, the appropriate level of what you're going to extract on, other than just trying and doing the trial and error thing. I don't think that there's, there's a science to it at all. Um, it's very much an art and I think people often get it wrong Um, you just gotta keep working at it that's it like just a lot of uh, just a lot of work (laughs) in terms of getting it right sorry I'm eating coconut Um, I like coconut so that was my interruption I went to the store to, uh, to get some stuff but and my point is you gotta you gotta keep working at it. Um, I think as you this is where the art comes in. As you gain experience with these things, you have a better sense of what is what is more appropriate, but still not like a good sense in terms of what to do. Um, and I think the only way that you could do it is just try it out. 
it's a new idea. So if we knew what, what you should actually do, it wouldn't be called research in any sort of way. Um, you know, I think that was Einstein that said that. So I think I'm in good company. Um, we don't know what to do. And so you just have to sort of whittle away and think about the problem a little bit more. So that's it. All right. Take care. And uh, have a wonderful day. Bye.